Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement a two-step login system where your users need to receive a code before they can fully log in. So here's a quick example here. I'm running this login action for this user and I am presented with a screen to enter in a six-digit code. And what happened in the background is that that user got an email with a code and that code also has an expiration date and time. So they'll need to enter it in quickly in order to continue with the app. Let's see how this works. We're going to start off with a regular login form first. So I have an input for the email address, an input for the password, and a button to log in, which is going to kick everything off. So when this login button is clicked, I'm going to trigger the log the user in action, and I'll connect my inputs. Email will go to the email address input, password to the password input. And then we're going to generate our verification data. So at this stage, um, after they've clicked this button, we're not going to redirect them anywhere yet. What we want to do here is send them a verification code. Uh, but first we need to generate the code that we'll send them. So we're going to make a change to the user who has just logged in. So make a change to current user. And I think I need to go into my database and add these fields. I don't have these in here yet. So I'm going to go to the user data type and create a new field for verification code, which I'm going to have it set to text. If you want to do numbers, that's fine. You can set it to a number. And I'm also going to create a new field for verification expiration so that when they get the code, they have a certain amount of time to enter it. Otherwise, they'll need to trigger the code again. It's just an extra layer of security there. So I'm going to set this to a date uh, value. All right, so we have these two new fields, verification code and expiration. So in my workflow, when I make a change to a user, I'm going to update these two fields, verification code and the expiration. For the expiration, this is completely up to you, but you want to make it some short amount of time um, from the current date and time so that the user can act quickly. So let's give the user five minutes here. Let's do current date and time plus seconds, 300 seconds, five minutes, okay? So this is gonna be, we're gonna use this value to determine whether they've entered in their code in time or not. And then the code is gonna be randomly generated so that it's a complete unique string every single time. I'm gonna use this calculate formula feature here and go over to the generate random string function. And I'm gonna do a six digit uh, code that will be made up of letters and this will be all capital letters again you can customize this to how whatever you want it to be for the code that you're generating so a six digit random string will be generated and I'm setting my expiration date to five minutes from now so now we've saved these values to the logged in user so now we can send them an email and say hey here's the information that you need to know. So we're going to send the email to the current user's email address and you can have your sender name. We'll do that. Uh, your verification code and we can enter in a nice little email. Hey, first name. Your code to log in is, and we'll do this in bold, and so the code to log in, we're going to take the result of the previous step uh, so that, you know, this we ensure that this step happens first and navigate to that code value and close the bold tag, right? And you must enter this code in within five minutes to continue logging in or whatever it is you want to say. All right. So um, next, this is this will get triggered in the background, but we need to now present the user um, on the front end with a screen to enter in that code. So they're going to have to leave the app to go check their email um, or open it up on another device, but we want to have the screen ready to go so that they can input the code. So we're going to create a second window here. I'm going to copy this entire group and paste it. And I'm going to label it, I'm going to move it over here for a second. All right, so I'm going to name this group, group uh, two-step auth. 
right? And I only need one input here for my verification code. We'll say your six digit verification code. Okay, and this input down here is now going to be um, text. I'm going to limit the number of characters to six, and that's where they're going to enter it in. And this button here will just say continue. Okay, so this group is going to be in the same position as the other one, but I want to make sure that it's not inside that group. Let me pull this to the front here. All right, but this will be hidden by default, all right, so that they only see this to begin with, but when they click on the button, after the send email action, we will hide the login group, okay, and then we'll also show the verification group, the two-step auth group. Okay, so that's our sequence. So now, on the continue button for the verification group here, we'll create another workflow when this button is clicked. So they should only be able to proceed if they've entered in the right code, number one, and they've entered it in time, number two. So when continue is clicked, only when the current user's verification code is whatever they've typed into, let me see, I don't think I renamed my input, here we go code. All right, so only when the current user's verification code, this is what was saved and generated for them. We are checking against this. When this matches what they typed into the input, so when that input value matches the saved value, and when the current date and time is less than the expiration date, so less than the current user's verification expiration, then they will be able to proceed and continue using the app. So we can, you know, go to another page inside the application. Um, they can, you know, you can show them a success message or whatever it is, only when these two conditions are met, right? So you can create a separate event for when one of those things is not true and show an error message. So let's make this one red to show, uh, just to kind of separate them for when we do not meet one of these conditions. So when the code is not um, what they typed in or the current date and time has already passed the expiration date, that means we have failed to meet one of these uh, requirements and we can instead go to a different page or we can show an alert message um, let's say we have a message here, you know, verification failed, whatever it is, maybe you want to take them back to the login screen, or maybe you want to show them a button to send them a new code. It's completely up to you, um, but this is what you would set up um, in the condition here to trigger that, whatever that action is. So I'll show this verification failed message there. Okay, and then this is the one that passes. All right, so let's see what this looks like. I'm going to log in as a user here. And so again, when I click on login, it's gonna log me in, number one. It's gonna generate that code and the expiration date and save it to my user record. And then it hid the sign up group there, and now I can see the verification group. So I'm gonna go check my email. Okay, so here's the email that I received. Hi, Gabby, your code to log in is here is my six digit all caps code. Copy that. And I have to enter this code within five minutes. All right, so I'm gonna enter in the code there. And well, actually let's do a, before I type that one in, I'm gonna just do some random numbers there that I know is not my code. So if I should see that error message, right? There's my verification failed. Now if I type in the right code, then I think I added a page navigation action. Yep, so we've passed the, it's another login form. Um, we've passed the verification. I'm just gonna go show you my user record here. Um, we can see my code was saved to my user 
and then I have an expiration date here of 5.13 p.m. Right now it's only a few minutes before that. And that's pretty much how this feature works. This can also be applied to text messaging features as well. Instead of sending an email, you can send a text message uh, using uh, you know, a service like Twilio, which I'll link down in the description below. Um, but the same principle applies. You're really just wanting to save these codes and the dates to the database somewhere and then checking them um, when the user inputs the value that they received via email or text. If you're using this feature in your application, I would love to hear your experience with it in the comments below. Um, and if you liked it in general, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching.